This screencast is going to teach you about cis-to-trans isomerization that's important in the vision process. And this is really referred to as visual phototransduction, the conversion of incoming light to electrical signals in the brain that tell us we have seen things, that we have seen this incoming light. So in order to understand why this is important in studying cis to tr and trans molecules, we have to look carefully at the molecules involved. The first one's beta carotene. Now, beta carotene can be cleaved into two vitamin A molecules. If we take a look at the beta carotene molecule, it's like a mirror image molecule, and it can be cleaved in half. And when it's cleaved in half like that, it results in actually two of the vitamin A molecules. So every beta carotene can produce two of these vitamin A molecules. And so it's going to be cleaved by an enzyme. And if we look at a vitamin A molecule, that vitamin A molecule has trans double bonds. It's got these hydrogens on the opposite sides of double bonds. Um, now this one has a hydrogen and a methyl group, but they're still considered all trans double bonds. Um, mainly because even these, if they weren't trans, then they would be considered E or all E. Um, so I would technically call them all E. Um, they're also just referred to as all trans double bonds. And so vitamin A is later catalyzed by a different enzyme that oxidizes it from the alcohol, from the retinol um, that it's been converted to when it was cleaved into retinol, into this aldehyde. And so again, we've got this all E, or it's just commonly called all trans, even though that's not quite accurate. Um, we've got this all trans retinol that we're going to monitor through the vision process. So in order to study the vision process, we need just a little bit of background information. So let's just quickly look at um, diagram of the eye and think about incoming light coming through the pupil and hitting the very back of the eye. And in the very back of the eye are these very important rod and cone cells. Now these cone cells are shown in color because the cones are important to the color portion of the vision process. So we've got them in red, green, and blue. And then the rod cells are just shown in black. So we've got these rod cells at the back of the eye, the retina, making up the retina. And then if we focus on a single rod cell, so here we're focused on a single rod cell, the rod cell is composed of discs. Now if we focus on the very outermost portion of those discs, so now we're going to the very outermost discs, um, in this outer segment of discs, we find that the discs, um, when they're magnified, they're stacked membrane discs, and when they're magnified, they have thousands of what are called rhodopsin. And so rhodopsin is a protein, and it's folded seven times, and it's been studied by x-ray crystallography. So anyway, here is a rhodopsin molecule. And it's called rhodopsin when inside of that molecule, it's kind of a pinkish purple, is a retinal. And that retinal is going to be the cis retinal. And so that's what we're going to study on the next slide, is we're going to study rhodopsin, so this protein that's found in a disc, that's found in a rod cell. So here's our rhodopsin found in discs on the outermost layer of the rod cell in the retina in the very back of the eye. So we've got this protein, and this protein rhodopsin holds cis retinal. And so the hydrogens of that double bond are on the same side 
when it's cis right now. And really, it needs that double bond. So I want to be clear that this should actually be a double bond. And then it's got its two hydrogens that are on the same side. So what happens to this rhodopsin is that um, rhodopsin is a sensory protein. Um, it's sometimes referred to as visual purple. So its common name is visual purple. It was discovered by a German scientist, a physiologist in 1876. His name was um, Franz Christian Bohl. And he was studying frog retina and noticed that they bleached from purple to a, a bleached colorless color in the light. And so he called that compound visual purple. So this visual purple is a sensory protein. Um, the protein part is colorless, the rhodopsin part. The cis retinal is the colored part, the pigment part. And so its job is to convert light to an electrical signal. Um, and it's really required for vision in dim light. So we'll get to more of that. So what happens in the light? In the light, this incoming energy that hits opsin is used to convert or excite these electrons in the double bond. So it's really able to break that bond, to twist that bond, to make the transform so that that double bond right here ends up trans in the right now. And notice how the other double bonds are missing, but they would be in their all trans form. So we would have these all trans double bonds. Um, and just to be specific too, this drawing is missing this fact that it's actually an aldehyde. And so you might want to stick that in that it's actually this aldehyde at the end of each of those molecules. So incoming light is converting cis retinal to the trans retinal. And then um, rhodopsin is actually going to be forced to release the retinal. It's going to release it in its all cis form because only the trans configuration fits in the protein. Um, and so it's shown here, released. And so it separates, and when it's separate, it's just called opsin. So the cis retinal is released, and now we have opsin alone. And so some of that cis retinal is stored in bright light. Some of it gets converted, enzymatically converted back to the trans form so that it can then again bind with opsin and then reform rhodopsin. So here's the thing, you walk out in bright light very suddenly, a lot of this cascading messages are going to occur. If you walk out into bright light, your opsin is going to release very quickly a lot of this newly converted cis retinal, and this sends cascades of messages to the brain. Um, it's like a domino effect. But what's going to happen is an electrical signal is going to be transmitted along the optic nerve um, to your visual cortex in your brain, you know, alerting you that you've seen something. But if you go out in bright light, that's going to happen really quickly and actually be painful um, because of all of those triggering cascading messages. Now, um, as if you go into the dark, into a dimly lit room then, some of that cis retinal is going to be slowly converted back to the trans form so that your eyes will slowly adjust to the dim light. And eventually those rods are going to help you um, be able to see in dim light. And so we know that they're really important to things like night vision, being able to drive at night. And so um, you may have been told to eat things like your carrots and your sweet potatoes because they're high in beta carotene for your vision. And that's accurate. You need the um, beta carotene, which can be cleaved into those two vitamin A molecules. And that vitamin A can be converted to the retinal. You need that for your rod cells to help you be able to see in dim light. 
And of course, it's also what causes this bleaching or causes you to see the bright light right away too. And it'd be painful in bright light. But it's as it slowly regenerates in dim light that you'll be able to see in dim light. And when this bleaching out happens um, in the first part of the stage in bright light, um, your cones do take over and your cones are a bigger part of your vision um, when that bleaching has taken effect in bright light. And then as this regeneration occurs, your rods help work in dim light. So hopefully now you have a better idea of why cis and trans isomers can be so important in biology.